All right. Hi, guys. So welcome back to the SAC podcast, Spartan Speaks. Um, we are here with Daryl Henry today, and he's going to introduce himself, and we're going to talk a little bit about some mental health stuff. Yeah, Claire, thanks for having me. It's an honor. Uh, I'm in my vehicle in a, in a Target parking lot. Uh, so what better place to, to get into some mental health stuff than that? But uh, yeah, my, my background, um, I'm from York. I went to York Suburban High School and then graduated from York College in the spring of 2007. I uh, got involved with on-air broadcasting. I was a sport management major, but um, got involved with broadcasting. That was my focus within the program. Did a ton of events through my, my student years. Uh, you know, men's and women's basketball was, was uh, the big one. Like, you know, my first year, the men's team went to the final four and all of that. So uh, that got in my blood for sure. Fell in love with that. Um, and then graduated perfect timing, right when the York Revolution were starting, and I was very fortunate to get that job, and, and here I am still, and still on campus during the winter doing basketball games, and love every minute of it. I hope to do it forever, so um, I do know a fair number of the student athletes that uh, might be tuning into this, so it's an honor to be on and, and share my story, and you never know when it can resonate with somebody. Absolutely. All right. So let's just honestly jump right in. So what are some of the ways that mental health has impacted your life personally? Yeah. So uh, I am somebody that deals with depression and anxiety and sometimes it's, it's pretty awful. Um, you know, one of the thing, one of the reasons I wanted to share, and I've done it before, it's not the first time I've spoken publicly about it, but um, you know, I went to, I, I can't remember what made me think recently, what, what gave me the idea. Um, I forget what, what really triggered that, but I spoke with, uh, with Matt Day, our assistant athletic director and, and asked him, you know, is there any, any way to get involved, uh, on campus and, and would it be helpful, you know, for somebody to hear? Um, so this great idea was, was shared. I had no idea that you were doing this. I'm not a student athlete, uh, but it's, it's amazing and it's great to be on here. So I, I think the biggest thing before we get into specifics, I think the biggest thing that to me, maybe it makes me hope that my story can help somebody else is that, you know, if you see me at, at the Grumbacher Center or if you hear me on the radio and we've got an exciting game, you probably have no idea that I'm dealing with this stuff. And, you know, that's a lot of us, like, you know, maybe some of our players, they're out there performing at a high level, but they're dealing with stuff and you can't see that. Um, and it can be just as crippling as God forbid a knee injury or something like that. Uh, but you don't see it. So, you know, more and more people are talking about it now. It's had a huge impact on my life. Uh, it's been a huge challenge. Um, you know, if I go, so I dealt with it for the first time um, when I was a freshman at your college, a lot of change. Back then, it wasn't something that was discussed much. And I had no idea why I felt the way that I did. And I just kept going and uh, it was it was a miserable several months. I didn't know what to do about it, where to turn, didn't know what it was that I was feeling. It was, you know, deep depression and anxiety type stuff. So from there, I was, I, I don't recall dealing with it again until several years later. But, you know, now if I look back at my past decade or whatever, I would say more years than not, uh, for sure. Um, I've had a, a long major bout with it. So it's a, it's an ongoing challenge. I take medication for it. I go to, to therapy once every two weeks. Um, and if it wasn't for those things, you know, who knows if I could even deal with it. So it, it's an ongoing, it's, it's a huge part of my life. And, uh, honestly, it's an honor to, to share a little bit about it in, in the hopes that, it can, it can help others. 
Yeah, that's all really great. Um, so just curious, do you think you've ever faced any potential stigma or like had any apprehension sharing in your past or even now, um, just from either being an athlete or maybe potentially like pushback from like the way society views men and how there's like that stigma around talking about mental health, so any of those things? Yeah, I think, I think maybe, um, you know, if I think back to when I was a student at, at your college, there were probably some times that I tried to hint about it to somebody and sort of got shut down. Like, you know, what's, what's wrong with you, get it together or stuff like that. Um, and may, maybe even, uh, you know, I would say, I would say after that, 2004 time period when I was a student I would say maybe 2012 is the next time that it really ramped up for me um and probably around 2012 and 13 maybe there was still a little bit of that reaction from some people um now you know I had some pretty close friends that I was able to confide in and they understood it and and somehow I figured out that they were going through similar things. So, you know, I've been able to bond with people over that. Uh, so you don't get that stigma from those people, but people that don't understand it and haven't been through it. I do feel like now in 2022, uh, that, that stigma is less of a thing. I'm sure it's still there. You know, I'm sure some people still don't understand it. Social media is terrible. I mean, like if you, I'll, I'll see a lot of, tweets instagram stuff and it resonates with me big time there's some accounts that i follow and i'll see stuff and it's like wow that's exactly what i feel sometimes and i could never put it into those words and then if you click on it and you read the comments there's a lot of trash in there like oh that's you know i, I don't even know what what criticism it is but you see it um but i do feel like you know, big picture, there's a lot less of that stigma nowadays. There's still some of it, but that's why we continue to talk about it and try to chip away at it. And, uh, you know, I definitely think there's more understanding now than there was even a few years ago. Absolutely. I totally agree. So you mentioned a little bit earlier, kind of, of the why behind why you choose to share your story. Um, how did you get to a point where you actually felt comfortable enough and like confident in where you are to be able to share uh definitely wasn't easy I think um you know for for a long time one of the hardest things uh was you know let, let's just take let's take my job for instance so like we're in the middle we, we just started the York Revolution season so I remember a couple of years ago maybe the most difficult thing about it was knowing that you feel like garbage inside and you have to go face you know the players your co-workers the fans every single day and hide it and put on your acting face and that was the most exhausting thing about it um that was maybe maybe in some ways worse than even it <laughs> itself so um somewhere in there I don't again I don't know what the specific event was but somewhere in dealing with that and maybe it was talking to, to somebody about it or reading something you know maybe it was like a, a professional athlete that told his story I'm, I'm not sure but at some point I know like 2019 is when I started going to therapy. I'd, I'd gone a couple times intermittently, didn't stick with it. Um, 2019, I was off my meds because I, you know, after games, I was partaking in uh, some adult beverages. And if you're on, if you're on meds, like that interacts poorly. So it was just a bad combo. So got back on the medication, started going to therapy full time. And, and somewhere within that, I said to myself that I want to get to a point where I feel good enough about it that I can share what has happened to me in the hopes that it helps others. Um, yeah, I told my therapist that, you know, she thought that was a, a great goal. 
um, it, the, the opportunity to share for the first time actually kind of came out of nowhere, like a, a year later. Uh, so 2020, when everything was shut down, uh, you know, the revs, we've got a, a huge partnership with Wellspan Health. And with not having a baseball season, we had to find ways to do other things with them. And they wanted to, you know, highlight their focus on mental health. And obviously that year, <laughs> more people than ever were going through struggles. So um, I was fortunate that my boss knows my story, is supportive of my story. Um, and he thought of the idea, you know, what if we turned it into a, a podcast or a radio show that's on mental health? And I, I got put in touch with like the head of their I guess they're the head of, of their psychology program or EAP, the employee assistance program, what a, he's, he's the head of something. <laughs> and, uh, and we did on zoom, just like this, we did uh, like a nine part series where we talked about different aspects of it. And, and it involved me telling my story uh, throughout. So, you know, I think it stemmed from knowing that, uh, I think three things like knowing that if you continue to hold it in, that's really hard. Uh, so in a way telling my story helps me, um, number two, seeing other people do it and thinking to myself, you know, if, if I have all these experiences, what good is it if I don't share and try to, and try to, you know, help somebody else and be a resource. And then I think number three, uh, kind of the motivation of, of wanting to make the people that have been in my corner uh, throughout these experiences, wanting to make them proud. So I think, uh, I think those are the reasons that I decided to tell my story. Yeah. So now when we're talking about like struggling day to day, what are some of like the toughest aspects of just getting by and like managing your mental health? Yeah. Um, you know, if you if if you're in the midst of a struggle, uh, the world doesn't stop. And you know, we could take we could take my job with being a baseball broadcaster. We we play every day, and there's deadlines to meet every day. Whether it's you know being on the air and having all my preparation done by a certain time, or if there's like you know some other longer term project that needs done by a certain date on top of what we're doing every day. I, you know, I think um, one thing that I need to watch out for is, is the everyday nature of the job. There have been times where I've taken on too much myself and I get super fatigued and overwhelmed. And then that's just a bad recipe for everything mentally. And, and, and something little can set you off. And, and it's so, it's so dangerous and scary the way that, um, you know, one thing can spiral and it can become like a snowball rolling down a hill and all of a sudden you're, you're in it deep. And when you're in, in bad depression, you don't know if it's going to, like, you don't, one of the things that aggravates me is when people, you know, expect you to snap out of it or, uh, Oh, see, it's not that bad, you know, stuff like that. You don't, it, it, it's an illness. You don't just snap your fingers and you're okay. Um, you don't know if it's going to last a week, uh, three days, three months, a year. <laughs> you know, I've been through all those time periods, I, I would say. Uh, but I think the toughest thing about every day is, you know, and to go back to, doing this job every day um I, I probably would have been justified to step away at some point and take time to myself to try to get right like it was that bad it's been that bad multiple times but I've never done that I just I felt like it would be even more painful for me to be away from what I do love and you know sometimes you can you can bury yourself in the game and you can you know find three hours of peace you know, by doing a form of art that you love, which is kind of what a broadcast is really, um, you know, painting the picture of what's happening during the game. 
Um, but I think the toughest thing is, you know, trying to trying to bottle it up, put it aside, move forward, get your stuff done, pretend that everything's okay, because there's a cause and effect of all this. Like if you, a lot of times, you know, if you're struggling, you'll pull away and you won't answer messages. You won't return texts or whatever. Then a day later there's guilt and then (laughs) that manifests itself. So um, all those types of things. And then also like, you know, knowing the things that you're supposed to do every day, uh, which for me, I have homework from, my therapist every week a lot of it is like you know doing affirmations of of positive thinking even if you don't believe it three positive reinforcements begins to cancel out that negative and it rewires the way that your brain functions um mindfulness meditation to try to calm those anxious thoughts finding the time to do those things and to continue to believe in it that's also a challenge like you know what you're supposed to do and sometimes you don't even have the energy to set aside the time and do it so um yeah it's a a struggle every day (laughs) no i'm totally with you i know i'm i'm also in therapy and i do similar um homework each week or per bi-weekly and it is really just trying to find that extra time in the day like i know there's 24 hours but they're like real life just doesn't sometimes like allow for you to stop and take a second but yeah so going off of that what were some of your lowest points if you want to talk a little bit about you know some of the toughest challenges you've been through and kind of how you dealt with it and just kind of what happened yeah sure um you know some of the things that come to to my mind um you know sticking with the whole baseball and sports aspect and even basketball and and what I do for a living um you know one of the things it it had always it had never been a problem during basketball season until a couple years ago um and I was afraid that that I was coming across as like different in some way like not caring or out of it or aloof or whatever um so I actually, actually uh, confided in Coach Hunter and Coach Whitman and Scott Geis. You know, those are three of the people that I worked the closest with during the winter. I told them what was going on just because I didn't want them to think that I didn't still love what I was doing or being around the team or anything like that. So lowest points going off that, I think, would be, you know, that same year. Um, I remember during baseball season the revs had this incredibly exciting team and we were making this playoff push and these exciting comeback wins and I didn't want to be there I wanted to be anywhere else I didn't have the energy to go through it I was faking my way through it I wasn't feeling it I was like numb couldn't feel the excitement even when we clinched like I was out in the clubhouse you know we're throwing beer in each other's faces and you know, I'm, I'm faking a smile. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess I, I guess I enjoyed being out there, but I just, I was not into it. I didn't have the fire in it. Um, you know, that's a low point. I remember some days that year where, you know, it's, it's getting to be afternoon and I'm still laying in bed trying to get the motivation to, you know, knowing I've got all this to do and that just makes it worse um and just not wanting to go through it like not wanting to go through another day of doing something I love um and then you know I I know sadly uh some people unfortunately you know it gets to the point where you know they have a a plan of ending things and I've I've never I've never had that but I have harmed myself which is a pretty you know pretty dark topic to go down but uh, I'm sharing that because a lot of people do um I've done that and and you have uh you know I I guess maybe I've had what they call ideation of of self-harm like you you see it happening you don't have a plan you don't act on it 
but maybe you wonder like, you know, if something happened, who would care? Um, or if you're going through something relationship wise, like you think to yourself, if something happened, would this, would this person give a crap, you know, stuff like that. So, um, I would say those are some of the, the darkest points. Um, I guess my self harm would really, has really mostly been like when I get super, super overwhelmed or, or something about whatever's going on and I feel like there's no way out of it um, no answer uh, so some of those moments I would say and, and beyond that just like the the major long bouts of depression where you feel just totally empty inside like you've got nothing <laughs> those those are pretty low too those are pretty painful and it's the pain that uh, that people don't see you know unless you talk about it so do you think that there's anything specific that helped you come out of those times or kind of face it um, and come out on top? Or do you think it's just kind of a byproduct of this like long journey and like everything will just cycle and there's no kind of rhyme or reason? Which way do you think? Oh man, that's a great question. I don't know if I have an answer to that. I think, um, you know, one of the things that I see on, on social media a lot that resonates with me is that uh, if you're feeling a certain way right now, try to remember it. It's not permanent um, because you do come out of it. And, you know, I don't, I don't know, because I would, again, if I didn't do therapy and medication and all those things, I don't know where I would have ended up. Um, so there are things that I do to improve it, but still, it's not a quick fix. It, like when you're in it, uh, it, it takes a long time. I mean, back in 2004, when it was untreated, it was probably a good 15 months that I was a mess. Um, 2019, I would say probably eight months. And that was with therapy. And, and, and you know, just think about how frustrating that is like you're trying to get better you want to get better you want to feel better but it's an illness I, for me personally I don't know if it's a chemical thing in my brain I know some people you know that that's definitely a thing uh, some of my medication is supposed to to counteract that I don't think it's concussions I mean I've had a couple usually that's impacted by by many um, but nobody knows I've, I've asked my doctor that and, and she was like, well, they can't really tell until they look at your brain after you're dead. So like, nobody really knows the answer to that. Um, and I've been asked that, like, do you think that that had any impact on, on your brain and everything? So, um, but anyway, back to the question, like, think about how frustrating that is when you're trying, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing to get better and it still takes that long. So I think, honestly, I think just, you know, having the faith and staying the course and trying and fighting and eventually, eventually it does get a little bit brighter um, and you do start to see the color in the world again and feel the love for things that you enjoy doing. It does get better, but it's not like a, I, I hate to say it, but in my experience, I wish I had better news, but um, it's not like a wake up the next day and everything is all, <laughs> is all back to the way it should be. You've got to keep, keep at it, keep fighting it. Yeah. So along the same lines, so what are some strategies that you found that have really helped um, and on the same but like, what would you say to anyone that potentially are doing those things and are struggling to find that, that strength to keep doing them for so long? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got a lot of things I enjoy doing and uh, sometimes I can't even bring myself to do them. Like even like just watching Netflix or something relaxing like that because uh, I'm just stuck in my own head. So one of the things that, that I do and my anxiety will lead to like obsessive worrisome thoughts uh that's one of the things that i really struggle to control so um 
this is probably not therapist recommended because you're kind of reinforcing a negative in a way. But if I'm in one of those obsessive thought cycles, I'll journal it to myself so that I can at least put it away and go back to it later if I need to go back to it later. Now, what I really should do, and I try to do it, um, is you take that negative thought and you, you can write it down, whatever, but then next to it, write down the positive one. And most often, the negative one is something irrational that's in your imagination. And you try to force yourself. Again, those affirmations, like I'm supposed to do those three, three times at a time, three times daily. Uh, because three times starts to uh, overrule the negative and, and rewire the way that your the neurons in your brain, I guess, like uh, interpret things. So, um, so you try to take those negative, irrational, imaginative worries and counter it by journaling or writing down or listing uh, the positive and the rational and what most often is the actual case as to what's going on. So, you know, your brain can be your worst enemy um, when it comes to your imagination. And, and then again, like if you're in that state, um, it just, it has a tendency to snowball and, and to compound and get worse. So that's one thing. Uh, and it does work. It does work. It's just, it's a shame that I can't, you know, bring myself to do it every day, but you know, you know how it is, you know, the struggle. Um, <laughs> and then specifically for the, you know, overactive brain, um, the meditation, five minutes of guided imagery or, uh, or breathing techniques, th those are helpful. I do feel like I'm less, you know, uh, I don't know, I feel like my brain is less overactive when I do those in the morning uh you know counting backwards if you're really angry about something or, or you know trying to trying to realize all your five senses and that's a grounding technique when you're when you're feeling overwhelmed there's a lot of a lot of techniques um one of my favorite things to do in therapy is it's called cbt cognitive behavioral therapy so she'll help walk me through this and I'm supposed to be able to do it on my own, but um, you'll take a, a situation and then, you know, kind of the same thing as the affirmations, you know, what's, what's worrying you about it. And then, you know, over here, you've got what's, what's the actual reality of the situation. And it's almost like this, like this critical thinking, problem solving, um, to sort of, you know, show you that, uh, that what's in your imagination isn't the real thing. It, I don't really know how to describe it, but um, so one of the examples that she gave me that I think is kind of funny, actually, and, and it's one that's easy for me to remember. Um, let, let's say it's, let's say it's a, a clip on the years that you're having a problem with, or you're worried that there's a problem or something like that envision them sitting in the room next to you and what you're really worried about would they really say that to you probably not so uh some of those like critical thinking techniques i, I find are helpful but um yeah, yeah there's you know you can you can dive dive into hobbies that make you Ex exercise is huge. I can't believe I didn't say that first. That releases chemicals that make you feel good. Uh, it makes you feel better about yourself, releases stress. I like to do it with, you know, if I'm, if I go to the trail, I like to have upbeat music if I can. Um, you know, so there's a lot of, a lot of things, you know, some probably work better for other people. I know, I know some people do art therapy. They do coloring to calm themselves. So yeah, it's, it can be a very individualistic approach, but uh, there's a lot of, a lot of really good strategies, that, strategies out there. Yeah. 
So when you talk about exercise and like getting up and um, trying to push through some of this stuff, have you ever like had a really, really hard time actually getting to do those things that help? Um, and so if, if yes, what would you say to some people that are feeling the same? Like they want to do those things and things that help them and make them feel good, but they just genuinely don't have the energy or the, the push. Yeah, definitely. Um, it is way easier said than done. I, I would say my advice would be one foot in front of the other and do what you can and go easy on yourself. Be your own best friend, not your worst enemy. Be understanding and gentle with yourself. If, if getting out of bed and going to the kitchen, I mean, when you're struggling, that can be the most exhausting thing. You know, one of the things I struggle with is if I'm in a bad spot, um, I don't know, just, you know, getting a work email and it could be the simplest request, but it feels like the biggest, <laughs> biggest stressor and biggest chore and most difficult thing to, to complete. Um, so my advice would be recognize your small victories, even if that's just getting to the kitchen and pouring yourself a cup of coffee in the morning if if that took so much energy like i get it that that doesn't mean that you're weak it just means you're struggling with an illness and i've been there um i don't know maybe i am there right now like i'm still i'm still working through stuff so um you know uh and back to the exercise thing in, a, in an ideal world, I would love to do like 45 minutes of high intensity interval training. That's kind of my favorite thing now, but it's been a, it's been a little bit since I've been able to do it. Um, and one of the things that really helped me 2016, when I had a, a long bout, um, I was gone for walks almost every day with music, you know, just going to the rail trail, just getting outside, getting away from my desk like an hour a day. Um, and if that's like, if you can't get yourself up to do something really intense, that's okay. Like if you can, if you can force yourself just to take a short walk, doesn't have to be an hour. Um, any small victory when you're struggling, honestly, it's, it's a huge victory. So pat yourself on the back, go easy on yourself. It's easier said than done, but um, sometimes that can be the start of, of a turnaround. It's just something small like that. And I think, you know, one of the, one of the really painful things of going through a mental health struggle, there's, there's a lot of times like you feel so down that you're afraid to take that step to get better. Uh, it almost in a twisted way, it's like, do I even want to feel better or do I just want to, do I just want to be? You know, do I just want to live in this and do I want to go through the effort? Uh, and it might take you a while to get to the point where you have the strength and energy to put forth the effort. Um, and that's okay. Like, I understand it. I get it. Uh, you know, no judgment on my part and you're, you're not weak for it. So. Yeah, my last question, just kind of branching off of that. So I know that most of our audience are student athletes. And so what if uh, advice, if any, would you have for people that are struggling right now, especially athletes, um, especially keeping that last part of mind that you said about seeming weak? Um, a lot of the things that we have talked about is not typically um, seen as the peak of strength, but it is. <laughs> you know, it might not be on the court or your des like designated sport, um, but a lot of finding the courage to manage your mental health is a sign of strength. So what would you have to say to someone that's really struggling currently? Yeah, I would say, I mean, in a way, I'm a, I'm, I guess I'm a little bit in the same boat because with my job, it's, it's a little bit of like, you know, when the light goes on, you're expected to perform. Uh, and that's really tough when you're struggling to try to push that down, push it aside. Um, and, and be as good as at, at what you do as you typically are. So if I, if I had to guess, athletes probably feel that way. Like when it's, if they're struggling, when it's game time, 
you know, you've got to put that aside and push through. Like, I totally understand that struggle. So um, I would just, my biggest advice would be, you know, keep fighting, know that you're not alone. There's a lot of people going through it. Reach out to friends who would understand. That is a huge thing for me. Like some of my closest friends are people that have gone through it, you know, coworkers who I've somehow, you know, discovered and bonded with that have gone through it and people that I know understand it and have my back um, and won't get sick of me, you know, uh, complaining to them if I'm, <laughs> if I'm feeling bad. Um, there, there are people that will not judge you and I'm willing to bet that your closest friends and sometimes this this illness will trick you into into feeling like you've got no friend and that you're totally alone even when you're surrounded by people that love you that sucks like that that is a tough way to feel and i've been there too um but my advice would be to not hold it in to know that more and more people are talking about it being open about it openly seeking help about it it's 2022 it doesn't have to be you know hidden it, it's not shameful uh so many people are going through it's it's just like if you have a bruise if you have a a bruise on your leg well maybe we have a bruise on our brain right now it's it's the same thing it needs treated it needs help um you know it needs it needs a little rehab basically to get back to where you to where you need to be so again to sum it up um my advice would be you know, don't hold it in, find an outlet, whether that's a friend of yours or a hobby, something that's healthy, not something that's self-destructive that would make things worse. Unfortunately, too often, myself included, we turn to things like that. Uh, and to just keep fighting every day and to know that if you need to take a step back for a period of time, like if you have to do that, that's okay. I said earlier that there was probably times I should have, and I never did. Um, but, you know, sometimes you have to hit the pause button to be able to get back to being the best version of yourself. And it might take a short time. It might take a long time, but um, you know, those, those would be my pieces of advice and just, you know, don't give up because if you do keep fighting every day, eventually it, it does get better even if you don't think it will. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing and being vulnerable and, you know, sharing your words of wisdom. Um, I really enjoyed having you on and having that conversation with you. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Claire. Your, your college and Spartan student athletes will, will always have a, a special place in my heart. There's a, there's a real love for me and, and the Spartans and, and your college in general. So to be able to share my story with, with you guys and on this platform, it's, it's a big highlight in, in my journey, to be honest with you. It's really an, an honor. So thanks for having me on. Of course. Hi right, guys, so that was Mr. Daryl Henry. He was amazing. Um, just a little plug here for your college services. Counseling services are always available. We um, we'll be posting a lot of stuff on the YSP Stack Instagram page for resources in light of Mental Health Awareness Week, which is this week. Um, I know finals are really stressful. There's a lot of spring sports that are coming down to the MAC championship. So if you ever need anything, just please don't hesitate to reach out, find resources, your captains, your coaches. We are all here for you guys. And I know that it gets really tough because I am money. So yeah, have a great day. Thanks for listening.